Hello everybody, so for today's vlog, I thought of doing something a little bit more different. Um, I will be doing a what's on my iPhone 6 plus video. So I'll be showing you all the apps that I really enjoy using, the apps that I use the most, and new apps that I've downloaded that I'm really loving as well. So hope you guys enjoy and let's get started. So first off, when you open my phone, you have this Christmas themed wallpaper. I'll actually show you the app that I get my wallpapers from. Even the wallpaper of my home screen, uh, I use the same app for it. So for the first page, I have all the apps that I use the most often. And then second page, I have all my apps segregated into different folders. Third page are all the apps that I don't really use at all. So first off, I want to show you VSCO Cat. This is my go-to app to edit photos. For example, let's take a photo. Uh, let's take the photo of Essie. You have so many filters that you can choose from. They even you can even download free filters, or if you really want to buy filters, you can do that as well. And then aside from picking a filter, you can edit the exposure. You can what else? Can you, do? you can. There's contrast. There's all these different editing tools that you can use. So it's very easy and then once you're done, you just click button and then the arrow button that goes up and then you can save it to your camera roll, post it directly to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Mail, Google+, Plus, Weibo, and more. <laughs> Another app that I like using is the Sleep Cycle app, which is down here. So basically, it's an app that you can use as your alarm clock, um, but it's not your typical alarm clock because normally your alarm clock will just wake you up on the dot. If you set it at 8.30 in the morning, it will wake you up at 8.30 in the morning and basically jolt you awake because it will just, you know, have a really loud noise and you just wake up. Here with Sleep Cycle, it actually wakes you up more naturally, meaning the volume gradually increases so you wake up like you would normally without the alarm clock if that makes any sense. Another thing I like about Sleep Cycle is that it actually tracks your sleep at night so it tells you when you reach deep sleep, how long you stayed awake before you fell asleep, um, the, your sleep quality, how many hours you were in bed, um, how many times you turned or activity in bed, and everything like that which I really like and then it makes a chart so you can actually tell when did you sleep the best, when did you sleep the shortest, um, how well you're sleeping overall which I think is a really good app to make sure that you get enough sleep because nowadays we're all so busy um, we forget that our bodies need the rest um, and it actually teaches you how to use it as well you just leave your phone face down um, near your pillow make sure it doesn't get covered with the pillow or anything like that. You do have to purchase this app, but I think it's an app that is well worth the price. Um, uh, my preferred uh, Twitter client or Twitter app is TweetBot, but I still do use Twitter. Um, it's just your basic Twitter client. I just like how it looks better and yeah. That's basically, it's all about preference. You don't necessarily have to get tweetbot. I just don't like how Twitter looks like. It just doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't appeal to me in London. <laughs> okay, so let's get to the second page. So the second page, I have all my apps in designated folders, so to speak. So in the first folder are all my social apps, quote unquote. So I have like Viber, WhatsApp, Line, FaceTime, Skype. And then for my second folder, I have the top, my photography apps. I have Snapseed, uh, Puzzle Collage, iMovie, Square Fix, Rookie, Foster, and then Repost. So Snapseed, I go to when I want to edit the photo more, meaning I want to do a more detailed edit. I will use this app, but I don't use it as often uh, as I use VSCO Cam, just because VSCO Cam is just easier to use. This is a uh, puzzle, however, is my favorite app to use to like add borders, um, make collages, and everything like that. The only thing though you have to take into consideration is that you do have to purchase a lot of the different packages or different themes. 
you just have, um, if you don't want to purchase anything, you can do challenges and then they give you points and you can use that to buy packages. So this app is actually, I use this um, for, as I said, my frames. So a lot of you have been asking me on Instagram what apps I use for editing my photos. This is one of my top three. So Square Fix, I use to make non-square photos into square photos, like this one of my cat Essie doing a yoga pose. <laughs> so there it just adds that border, that white border on the side. It's actually a free app, so this one you can download. It does have um, ads, so if you don't want the ads, you'll have to buy the application. Rookies I use when I want to add text to a picture, for example, this one. So if I want to add text, for example, Essie, you can have a lot of different fonts to choose from. Like for example, I don't know, let's just do a random one, like that one, and then you can change the color. And it depends on you. You can put shadows so that the text stands out. So it really depends. You can place it anywhere you want as small or as big as you want. It really depends on what you want to do with it. Another app that I use, especially to create my thumbnails on YouTube, is Foster. So it's basically an app full of different um, designed posters. So for example, this one. And then you could choose a photo in your album. For example, this one. And then you can change the text as well and you can edit everything and then once you're done with that you click next for example and then it shows you different finishes that you can choose from and then you just save it to your phone and then upload it from there repost I use to repost other people's photos so I can grab it and post it on Instagram as well so let's get to my games folder so in games, I have Bagot, Banglory, Fruit Ninja, 2048, Heads Up, Sonic Dash, Plants vs. Zombies 2, and Candy Crush, Soda, which I'm not really sure if I like, so I might delete that later. Um, Bagot, sorry, is an app that's puzzle-based. So basically your goal is to put items in your shopping bag, making sure you don't break anything. And it's a very addicting app. I suggest you guys check it out. Another app that, or another game app that I really love is Bane Glory, which is an MOB style of game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the graphics is really awesome. I want to show it to you, but um, it will just take too much time. And it needs to be in landscape mode, which would uh, stop the recording right here. Uh, another thing I like, of course, is 2048. It got really popular, and I actually finished it already a lot of times. Uh, I also really enjoy Heads Up, and of course, Fruit Ninja. I love Fruit Ninja. For my travel folder, I have Grab Taxi, Currency Converter, Maps, Safari, Airbnb, and Uber. Just really boring apps. I'm sorry, my phone's really boring. Uh, for lifestyle. Uh, Pimp Your Screen is the app that I use to get my wallpapers from. So you have a lot of different wallpapers to choose from. A huge plethora of wallpapers. And you just save it to your phone if you like a specific one. And it saves to your photos and then from there you can use it as your wallpaper. Eat Your Kimchi is an app that I downloaded to support Eat Your Kimchi, which is a YouTube channel. Um, owned by Simon and Martina. They're from Canada. They moved to Korea. They were supposed to be teaching there, but then their YouTube channel boomed, so they were able to quit their jobs and be YouTubers full-time. They do K-pop reviews and food reviews and travel vlogs, and it's just a really fun channel. I'm not really into K-pop. I'm more into them. Like watching them talk about Korea, talking about the food in Korea, traveling here and there. That's and their animals. Like this is their dog Spongy. Isn't he cute? 
So there. I highly recommend you guys check them out on YouTube if you don't if you haven't heard of them. They're really awesome. And then Pulse is just a news like a newspaper app or a news feed app. It just tells you news around the world. Uh, okay, what else? So in extras, I have a basically just apps that I don't really use, and I have third-party keyboards that I've downloaded and I'm trying to figure out how to use at the moment. So that's the end of my vlog for today. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!